Let's just get it together, shake hands with Kukunato. Let's play some good magic. Let me see if I can get this trophy. For those of you at home who have played the reanimator mirrors, you are degenerates. But besides that, um, <laughs> if you could tweet to us at SCG Live, is there something that you think would make the uh, the mirror be the best? I think Tide Spot Tyrant is the good backup after Gristlebrand, but what do you think it's going to be if this is ever like right now? Two of these decks in the top eight. If we start seeing a lot of reanimator mirrors, how do you get the edge? All right, here we go. Flooded Strand, Underground Sea. That's where we're gonna start. I'm super interested to see exactly how this works. It's gonna be really, really good. And Ooh, just Christopher passed. Walton passes hmm. it after the fetch. Underground C from Kukunato side. And it's funny because both these players are gonna be like walking on eggshells. Like, you know, if you cast careful study right now, if you're a Kukunato, you're like, yeah, discard, a, discard like an Iona and something else. He just goes, yeah, reanimator, thanks. Like, you have to yeah. be super careful. Yeah, and the other thing about it too, let's say you go for the reanimation. Um, we got a ponder here from Christopher Walton after laying a land. Let's say you go for the reanimation and you fail. There's a creature in your graveyard. Yeah. And it's in target. Mm -hmm. All right, Ponderu. And he leaves him alone. He likes those cards. Shuffles away uh, one or two of them, but he liked that top card. Neither of these players needing to worry about silly cards like Wasteland in this matchup. So Christopher Walton going and getting the good stuff. Underground Sea. <laughs> one, Ponder again. Second Ponder. Going through trying to sculpt the perfect hand. We see a brainstorm, Lotus Pell, and an island. Not good enough, I don't think. Goodbye. In terms of the actual control or disruption elements that these players have, Christopher Walton has four Force of Will, three days, two Thoughtsees. His opponent, um, Robert, has four Force of Will, three Thoughtsees, two days, so very similar. All right, brainstorm on the end step. So, one, two, and three. Now, an end step brainstorm basically says to me that somebody does not feel they have enough time to make the best brainstorm. Yeah. And so instead, they're trying to use their mana efficiently because they don't think that the game will last long enough for it to matter. Perhaps he has a very aggressive draw here. Fetch land, gonna sacrifice this. So, hide one of those cards. We're gonna go down to 19. Kukunato's still in the lead right now, but life totals are yeah, a little I dubious get, at best. You could, no, no, Kukunato's winning. 19 to 18. <coughs> yeah, that's the right. scoreboard. You're right. If you think about reanimator, <laughs> if you think about reanimator decks in the past, uh, especially when reanimator got really big once Crystal Grant got released, uh, you saw Jerry Thompson top eight the Invitational in Indianapolis by playing reanimator in the legacy portion of the tournament. You saw people sideboarding. You really, really get deep with their sideboards. They had Caracas in their board uh, to be able to beat opposing Crystal Brands. You saw a lot of people have blood gas in their board to entomb for because it was so hard to actually keep a creature in play because the Krakus said all you want to do is entomb and blood gas. They couldn't kill it and it would just attack and attack you again and attack you again and it was embarrassing and horrible but guess what? It won the game. Now the legendary rules changed a little bit now and also reanimator has slowed down quite a bit thanks a lot to Deathrite Shaman so you don't see people taking those measures like they used to. We see the entomb Looks like he's going for a super aggressive play here. Ooh. Lotus Petal, All right, reanimate, yeah. one man yeah. up for a daze. Force of Will pulled out of Christopher Walton's hand. And like Iona's like the end all be all because it names black and it pretty much ends it. There's a Force of Will moving, yep, and a Force oh, of Will back. Another Force of Will. Robert, or Christopher Walton is tapped out, so if there's a daze there, he could still win this fight. Okay. Okay, this is interesting because like he played Lotus Petal to play around daze. Does he have a reanimate or no? Passes. Wow. If he has, na if he has Naomi dead, reanimate. Ooh, we got two lands. He just has to say go. Ganado, careful study. He has rent. What does he have? I think he has Exhum. Not sure. Iona's like the trump card in this matchup because it comes into play. Name's Black, and that's like that's lights out. I one guess of, like show and tells an out. I suppose. One of the crazy things about a card like Exhum, remember, Entomb is an instant. So yeah. if you Exhum with an empty graveyard on your opponent's side, they could just say, gotcha. Right. Yeah, and he just says, uh, let's see if you got yeah. it. Screw Do you it. have it? Screw it, Entomb. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Robert Cucanato on the draw does win game number one. 
as we'll bring it back to the booth here. Christopher Walton will oh. be down a game. He'll be on the plate for this one because it's trivia time yet again. This wow. top eight is moving fast. We're not surprised. A lot of combo I'm okay decks. With that. Yeah, a lot of combo <laughs> decks. Okay need to get a little that. more sleep tonight, maybe. <laughs> again, if you guys are just joining us, it's trivia time. Uh, He's going to ask you a question. You're going to tweet your answer, hashtag of SCG Premium. This one's for six months. We'll announce the winner at the conclusion of the semifinals. Um, make sure you're on Twitter, hashtag your answer, SCG Premium. We'll announce one winner at the conclusion. Uh, it's about accuracy, not speed, so get them. Yeah, here we go. Okay. At the Invitational, the Star City Games Invitational in New Jersey, yep. the Invitational champion, Eric Smith, used what archetype in Legacy that's yep. represented in this top eight? Okay. If you can name that archetype, again, hash your t hashtag the answer, S hashtag SCG Premium on Twitter. As we do take a look at the sideboards here, I think they're going to be relatively the same. I'm going to take a look at, uh, I've got Walton's in front of me. He's got two copies of Thoughtseize, three Pithing Needle, two Chain of Vapor, two Show and Tell, two Flusterstorm, an Ashen Rider, two Engineer Explosives, and an Imperial Archangel. So this gets kind of interesting here because I think you're definitely going to want Ashen Rider because it's this yes. Angel of Spare type effect uh, that can kind of get you out from underneath some things. The question is, do you board in the show and tells? And the reason I ask you that is because we just saw Kukanato win by by reanimating Iona. He's gonna name Black Iona and leave Walton with just show and tells as outs. So if you board in two more show and tells, that means that when Iona comes to play, name's Black. That means you have four outs and show and tell, and then you cast show and tell. But then you risk then you risk like them putting a guy into play. Yep. Also, if you're not even in that board position, let's say like just he's got just big idiots in his hand. Like, are you just gonna catch show and tell when he has nothing in his graveyard? And you're just going, yeah, I'm gonna show and tell from my gristle brand. And he's gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna put in my gristle brand. Yep. What do you think about that? And yeah. then it gets really complicated. So I don't know if you bring in more show and tells or not. I think Ashen Rider is like an auto include. Uh, I like the idea behind Chain of Vapor because again, if we're talking about just strictly Iona, it's like, all right, come in, name black. Well, Chain of Vapor happens to be blue. Bounce it back to your hand. And I kind of like Thoughtseize so that you can actually work with some pretty good information. So there's there's some options here. I mean, cards that, are, that he can sideboard out, I think the, the, the obvious one is Elish Norn because we're not in that kind of matchup. Yeah. But he's going to want to leave in Gristle Branch. He's going to want to leave an Iona and Ty Spout Tyrant. And he's got, like, these spells to work with. I think Days kind of sucks in this matchup, honestly. But there could have been a situation where Days actually would have won in the game. So yeah. I don't know. Days is one of those cards that's incredibly effective if the game lasts one to three turns, mm -hmm. but after that, all you're looking at is force of will fodder. And uh, on Ro Robert's side, Robert's pretty similar. One of the things that he has is Coffin Purge, though. Coffin Purge is the big one that he has that Christopher Walton doesn't have. Um, pretty much the Echoing Truth is his analog to Chain of Vapor, and all of the cards that you mentioned otherwise, um, he does have that show and tell. He has a Spell Pierce in here as well. Pithing Needle, Inkwell, Leviathan, Crippling Fatigue, City of Traitors. Interesting if he goes with a show and tell plan, but like you said, we saw with Sneak and Show, there was always a tendency to side out that show and tell, or at least consider dropping it down, and we're already in a flurry of activity. Lotus Petal, Entomb, Ponder, Coffin Purge, Swamp, Island, Misty Rainforest are the cards here. Thoughtseize is going to take the manipulation card and ponder, but that means that Entombment is available to basically demonic tutor a creature to his graveyard. You can't really effectively take Coffin Purge with Thoughtseize because it has a flashback of a single black. You see Force of Will, the card drawn for Kukanato this turn. Gonna play a Misty Rainforest, gonna play Lotus Petal, and just gonna pass the turn back. One of the best things about Coffin Purge in Robert, Robert's deck is the ability to entomb for it. Mm -hmm. Ponder. Two and three. There's a brainstorm days and a land, and yeah, that's the thing about Entomb again. Like it's not, it's it says a card. A lot of people think it just says, it only says a creature. So just take a card from your deck, put it in the graveyard. Joey Andrews up game number one. Goblins up over blue, white, red. Delver. Yeah, I mean, I know one of the things I'm doing in one of my legacy decks. It's not a very good one. Is I'm entombing life from the loam. So yeah, we've seen and I've seen lands players try that before. Entomb in like a, in a like the 43 land deck lets you get life from the loam or just demonic tutor for a land and get it back. Uh, for, from Life Alone, so I've seen it be good in that deck before. Here's a thought from uh, from Kukanato. And there's a brainstorm, so we're gonna go hiding. Go ahead, he says. What you gotta hide? Days. There's more days. Yeah, we saw this. Those two he put back, and then an entomb. So I wonder, uh, wonder what we like. I mean, we saw him cast a uh, cast ponder. I think he kept it, and now he's casting a brainstorm. So it definitely has something that's worth hiding here. Didn't want to show the goods. Tough part here for uh, for Walton is that. Like, Entomb is actually pretty bad now. And, like, I think I'd be more than happy showing it because Coffin Purge just, like, bricks your graveyard so hard. Here you see. Yeah. 
careful study, reanimate, days, reanimate, entomb. Robert has a couple different choices here to make. The days in hand and a days on top of the library. In a lot of ways, the basically the gates are up. The enemy can come marching on through if he's got it. Yeah. Uh, Brian Green at Gang Greeny seventy nine wondering well, no no main deck Ashen Riders in either deck. Not really much of a surprise there to me. Uh, I do think it is great mirror tech, but with how diverse Legacy is, I don't think that you can afford to have a main deck Angel Despair type effect. Uh, like that, you know, if Reanimator is the best deck, I think that's perfectly reasonable, but we haven't seen Reanimator dominate like we did last year. Yeah. And the other thing to think about, too, is Tide Spout Tyrant can do a lot of the same kind of work. It's not the exact same card, but it is something that can remove a problem problem permanent. Mm -hmm. Flood Strand going to come in here for Walton, going to sacrifice that, get an Underground Sea, tap that island. What are we going to do here? It's a careful study. Hit one. Hit two, Gristle Brand Swamp. Do you dare discard Gristle Brand in the face of a Coffin Purge? Yes, he does only. Actually, you can activate it twice. He's got Lotus Petal and he has a uh, Misty Rainforest, so he can cast and flash it back. And uh, Christopher Walton, by using that Flooded Strand, he did share what the card was he had on top. Mm -hmm. This is interesting because like, he wants to discard Gristle Brand, but now he's slowed down in discarding it a tough call. I mean, one of the things about these decks, the actual amount of mana that they have to cast a spell, Robert has eight mana producing mana, or lands in his deck, and uh, we have on the other side of the table nine mana producing mana um, from uh, Walton. So it is possible to actually get up there and cast it, but that's a long way down the road. And you see, Kukunato's not going to make a move on the Confidence Purge, and I 100% agree with this because he has no reason to. I just don't like the discard of Gristle Brand there from Walton because I think you have to play Torch Show and Tell. Like, when your opponent has Coffin Purge in your hand, like, your reanimation plan is just out the window. Like, there's no way for you to pat, like, just play around it because Purge has flashback and it's so efficient. So here's a ponder here from Kukanato on his first main phase that I'm going to hold my Gristle Brand and, like, assuming that Walton still has Show and Tells in his deck or even board into the full four, that's my plan. It's not a great one, but I think it gives me the best chance to win. And Robert puts the cards back and decides to keep it. Oh. Well, sacrifice with a Misty, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good ponder. Yeah, one card chosen, the other's gone away. There's the underground sea. Now what's really interesting here is like if Walt if excuse me, if Kukunato uses another land this turn. Walton has a reanimate in his hand, and he also has a daze. And so daze makes things like pretty awkward, because like if he uses a land, then he goes coffin first, he just daze it, and then my Gristle Brand's back in play, and I'm kind of in the driver's seat here. But uh, I, I keep missing that Lotus Petal, so never mind. I take it back. Another, and now he has to use another land. Another ponder. We see a force of will, a careful study, and a land. Looks Sc good to me. Scale of 1 to 10. How good is Kukanato's beard? <laughs> I would be hard pressed to figure out an answer it's to that. It's really, really good. It's like I think it's like an 8. <laughs> Can you grow a beard that long? Can I? I've never seen you. I don't ever see you with facial hair. I used to have facial hair. kind of like that. Okay. <laughs> it's a good beard. Reanimate. Target Gristle Brand. So we're going to fight over this? Or is this just to get the first half of Coffin Purge out of the way? All right, purge it. Okay, you got it. All right, fair enough. You got me. Yeah, I mean, it may have just been baiting, honestly. Like, just say, okay, let's get part one of this over with. I mean, both of these decks are running card disadvantage cards, careful study being amongst them. At this point, there's a large issue about this being the quality. What are you doing that matters? So just... The Coffin Purge can't just sit there forever mm -hmm. and be, uh, you know, essentially conceded to. You just have to push into it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And maybe Christopher Walton doesn't have the show and tells. Maybe he does. I don't know. Kukanato going to cast a careful study of his own. Get a little bit deeper. Discard some cards here. It's got to be nice knowing that you can take a look at your uh, your opponent's deck list here in the top four and know that uh, Walton doesn't have Coffin Purge. 
Yeah. It's got to be really comforting. The choice of having the one coffin purge, particularly with the way that Entomb works as a, a tutor for it, um, I, you have to imagine that Robert had decided, you know, just in case I play against somebody else playing this deck, I want to have one weapon that's very good. Yeah. If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here in the booth with the one and only Cedric Phillips. This is SCG Live, the StarCityGames.com open series. We're in the legacy portion in the semifinals. We see a reanimate attempting to hit Robert's graveyard. Force of will in the fight over this reanimate. We're having some fun here. He can purge his own guy, force back. Wow, he still has a card in hand. The okay. reanimate does not work. Okay. So after the dust settles, Walton's going to pass the turn back. You can see the Tide Spout Tyrant removed from the game. Coffin Purge targeting his own guy. So now we're through the Purge part of the game. And both players, again, are just going to be playing off the top here. And this is, I know that from previous reanimator matchups, this is what kind of things kind of divulge to. And this is why um, the sideboard plan, this is so crazy to say, this is why the sideboard plan of Blood Guest was actually good. Because you're just like, yep, yeah, like, we're not doing anything. Get in for two. Get in for two. You can never kill it. And, you know, you were able to deal a bunch of points of damage. And you're also able to turn off reanimate. <laughs> that was the other thing that you got to do. That's right, Blood Guest, Mirror Breaker. I ponder, he leaves him on top. We see a brainstorm. The card he uh, he chose to get from that. There's fetch a fetch land. Too. Brain ancestral recall has been assembled. Thoughtsies, I think. Four cards in Robert's hand. Right, we're gonna what, see a brainstorm in response. What you got, buddy? He uh, yeah, fetches. He doesn't like the top from that ponder. Find yeah. something new. It's funny because the damage here actually does end up. It, it adds up. With Fetch Knights and Thought Seizes and Reanimates, the damage actually adds up quite a bit. Again, don't forget on the other side of the bracket, Joey Andrews playing Goblins up a game over Nick Cowden playing Blue Red Delver. Here is Brainstorm. Let's protect that hand. Draw. Battle, force, uh, Brainstorm? <laughs> Let's just shuffle it yeah. and get rid of yeah. random cards. Oh, I guess I like I'll make that. It I, I like I like that for concealing information. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> you don't make, you don't make it too obvious. Okay, thoughtsies. What am I gonna show you? Garbage. Pedal, pedal. Goodbye, pedal. I wonder what card he kept on top. His Force and Brainstorm on top. I wonder just when he left. I think he left the Force of Will on top because he will have the mana to be able to mm -hmm. cast it hard. Kukunato, is he going to pass the turn back? He does. A deep sigh of relief for Walton. Draw. In there. It's Brainstorm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I thought he was going to do the same thing. He's going to start by casting Brainstorm right now. Mm, main phase Brainstorm. Force. Strand. Bristle brand, or he's got probably got six sets. He's a little way away. Not not that far away though. <laughs> not that far away. Pedal, keep force. Yeah, pass. Okay. Yep. There's a telegraph. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> Robert, draw, pass. Christopher huh? fetches away, shuffle away that stuff. I didn't like the brainstorm last turn from Walton. Uh, main reason being is like he's got, he had one other card. I think he had one, maybe two other cards in his hand. But I think you can just wait on that brainstorm. It, like if we're sitting here playing Drago, you can build your hand a little bit so that when you do brainstorm, you're actually like putting back some more garbage and actually seeing more cards that way. Yeah. And you're having a more informed brainstorm because what's like by brainstorming that term, what are you actually looking to find? Like I feel like by brainstorming that term, you're looking to just like perfect them out. Yeah, and that's like pretty unlikely. I mean, it's kind of like the turn one preordain in the the Cobblehead match. Yeah, you know, you just wait as long as you can to cast uh, to cast preordain in that matchup. And like AJ Soccer says, uh, the best brainstorm is the one that's that goes uncast. Just keep waiting. Iona the draw. <laughs> Robert lays the lotus pile. He's getting up there. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeah. mana. Gristlebrand eight mana. This could be a thing that does happen. God, that would be awesome. I 
Eight mana, pass. Draw. But look at these full hands. I mean, this is what it this is what it comes down to. That's why the reanimator rare is so much fun. Because I mean, just look at like you know what these extra are trying to accomplish is just put a huge fatty into play super early. And when they don't do that, they kind of fumble and stumble. And now, like, the, the pieces are just, it's so awkward. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, two people are expecting to run a 100-meter dash, and then they get to the finish line, and they're both told, no, go a mile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I can't do that. I can't go long. A couple cards put back there. I'm going to keep it. It's a, it's an interesting situation, especially if you're not familiar with the reanimator mirror about what you're supposed to do. And I, to be fair, I don't think many people are that familiar with the reanimator mirror because I mean, who's who's hanging out testing reanimator mirror <laughs> in their local shop? I don't think it's something that happens a lot. So we're gonna start with a brainstorm here on Kukanada's side. I remember coming to uh, SCG Worcester, the very first SCG Worcester, and coming across the empty ballroom on Friday night, two players, playtesting the high tide mirror the evening before the event. It's definitely Matthias hunting someone else. <laughs> Every time I work with Matthias, he's always like, you want to play the high tide mirror? It's like, first of all, I don't want to play high tide, ever. And he's like, the mirror's so much fun. We both just sit there and don't do anything. Like, Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be resolving, it looks like we're resolving a brainstorm here about what cards to put back. The Coconut has a lot of cards in his hand, so this is a pretty informed brainstorm. And he's going to try to craft some sort of game plan, see if he finally found any action. It was uh, James Rinkowitz. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Grand Prix champion. Yep. In Legacy, unsurprisingly. That's the kind of thing, when I saw that, I thought, these are some dedicated legacy guys. Yeah. It's Friday night. Not out. Nope. Let's play high title night. Right. Hey, legacy is fun format. Underground C comes into play. We're going to sack a fetch line and make it a good brainstorm. Going to get on 13. I don't expect to see people moving into the, the, the blood gas strategy again. But you could see how, in, like last year, with this is how the games always ended up being. That you know, just like a lonely blood catch just kind of serving in for two a bunch was Boop, just good. Boop. Yeah, it was just good enough. <laughs> because the games ended up going like this. I don't think they go like how game one went a lot of the time, unless there's like a lot of mulligans or stuff or something like that. <laughs> it's funny because I almost feel like if there was a uh, let's say a black blind obedience, for example. It would do the same trick. Yeah, like just yeah, it really would. Poke you, poke you, poke yeah, you. Yeah, extort you a bunch. <laughs> That'd actually be really, really good right now. Here's a careful study, a little card disadvantage. Maybe that's the reanimator tech, Splash Blind Obedience. We found it. <laughs> we cracked it open. A zing. Yeah. <laughs> We're format solvers here in the booth. Throw parasites, is that the thing to go with? Is that a card? Yeah, that's a card. Yeah, that's a card. Get your thrall parasites today. StarCityGames.com. <laughs> the store button is at the top of the page. Here's a thought, sees. What you got over there, Christopher? Yeah, it's time to uh, it's time to open it up here. I was thinking about yeah, force a well. Yeah. Do you want to force this? Or do you want to force the card that comes after it? Is he is he just casting thought seeds just to cast it, or is he trying to get a force well out of your hand? Which there's a force. Oh, he has days for this. Yuck. Strong is weak. Brainstorm? Yep. Oh, looking with this Ice Age Brainstorm. Careful study. Brainstorm. Black card, I think. Got a own in his hand right now. Not sure what that black card is. Well, it's not Thrall Parasite. It's not on his list. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to reorganize here. He's got Iona in his hand. He's, I think, yeah, he's trying to create some action so he can try to slip this through. He's going to put two cards back on top. I see a Gristle That's Brand, Brand. Right That was the front. black card. Lotus Petal, careful study. All right, so Brainstorm resolves. Thoughtseize, going to sacrifice here. Kukanata really doing a lot on this turn. And remember how long he spent not casting that Brainstorm. Yep. It's uh, an echo of that AJ comment that you uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago. 
Yeah, I mean, I just, I, you know, you just wait a long time and brainstorm. That's just what you do. Because now he's, he, he's doing so many things, so much manipulation on this turn, so much action now. You know, if Walton has, like, a perfect hand, I think things work out for him. But you can see that uh, Kukunawa's really trying to make something happen this turn. He's got another brainstorm to cast in response to thoughts these. That's fine, too. Two and three. Animate that. Oh. Exhume. Something else. And don't forget about Adrian, those two lotus petals that are in play. Yeah. And I think, I'm not positive, I think he has a careful study in his hand. I think. It doesn't look like it now. And uh, brainstorm. And then mm. Thought Seized fails. Mm. Thought sees, uh did manage to get two cards out of Christopher Walton's hand, the Force of Will and the Lotus, not out of hand, pardon me, the Force of Will and the Lotus Petal. I'm assuming that there's something in the graveyard to, an to animate that, and he's going to get back oh. Ashen Rider. Ouch. Okay. He's going to kill a land. Exile you, go yeah. away. Now, that's interesting because, like, while that's annoying, that, you know, if that's, if that's something else, it's like a disaster. But it's just an Ashen Rider, which I'm saying just an Ashen Rider. Oh, oh, Tyrant boy. and an Iona. Are we going to see a reanimation spell Jeez. to follow up? Jeez. Is this reanimate? Yes, it is. What are you going to target? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, he cast reanimate. I think he has Exhume. Yeah, he cast reanimate, though. Yeah, he cast reanimate, so he can't go back. He's gonna get Iona. See so what I think. What I think he want to. We're gonna be Ashen Rider up on the screen really quick here because I think with Ashen Rider, it's okay. Whenever enters the battlefield or dies, so it's not when it leaves play. It's not like a Thrad Touch trigger. So what I think he wanted to do. I think he wanted to reanimate Tide Spy Tyrant, get that back, and then. Cast reanimate on his next guy, and then bounce Ash Rider to the grip, and then he'd have board supremacy. But as it stands right now, like I don't think he can do that, and he has an exhumed his hand. I'm not sure he can cast. And now, yeah, real tough Ash Rider getting to the red zone. Gonna take care of that, and we know he has an exhumed in his hand. Yeah, so this gets this gets terrible for Walton. There's a Lotus Petal. Is he gonna hard cast Crystal Brand? Oh, he might hard cast it. Do it for me. Oh. Do it. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven land, and I believe two, two lotus petals. petals. That's enough to get through a daze. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh. Hard cast. Do you have? Uh, do you have something for this, Christopher? Yes, force will this again. I don't think he has a blue card though. Oh. Force of Will and Ah card. Oh, God. And it works. He just drew, I think he just drew another oh, Force of Will. And he can't cast Exhume now, Adrian, because Ash Rider is in the mm. graveyard. It will come back. It'll kill what he does Exhume, and that is it. So, Robert Kukinato off of a hard cast Crystal Pan defeats Christopher Walton two games to zero. He's moving on oh. to the finals. Oh, look at that smile. When he won the game, you saw him just lean over a sigh of relief, yeah. pull his head back, big smiles, happy laughs. Christopher Walton, our number one seed. He had a very great run today. He finally gets knocked out of the tournament here in the semifinals. Nothing to be ashamed of yep. there. And we're going to see Reanimator fighting against one of the two of our remaining competitors. Yeah, it sounds like those two players are still battling out in the Goblins versus Blue at Red Delver matchup. I think we're going to be cutting that.